Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Before we can sit back, relax, hello, take hello. that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin Stone. That is Joe Bryant. And over there is Pedro Mateus. And everyone hello. joining us live. We got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. But first and foremost, what are we up to? What's new in our lives? I see Jill. You have a new shirt. Yes, I do. New, new. Pink, my new Pengu <laughs> shirt. I got it from AliExpress for under 10 bucks. I'm pretty happy. <laughs> and it fits nicely. It's a Chinese size extra large. <laughs> XL. Yeah. Bring it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've also been doing more work on my room. As you can see behind me, um, I have an empty wall back there. And my room's about a third empty now. So it's, I've made progress. <laughs> It's only a third Mike Tehan? Yeah, man. It, it's like one. <laughs> yes, it's only a third Mike Tehan. <laughs> it's a little bit. Odd. What was it like to visit that wall? You're like, hey, I remember you. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was, you know, there are a lot of computers back there were very heavy. So I have to have uh, Steve Husband move a few of them. So that's why not all of them are cleared out back there. But I was able to move my deck alpha because it's on uh, casters, it has wheels. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Pedro, has it been another um, interesting week where you've totally not went and bought some antiquated laptop type device? Well, uh, the auction only ended today, <laughs> a couple hours ago. Actually, actually. no. And uh, uh, this was a perfect time for uh, Google Docs to sign me out. Thanks, Google. <laughs> uh, the. <laughs> Good thing I didn't write anything for the intro bit, otherwise uh, I'd be fumbling right now. But yeah, no, I, I ordered, uh, well, I put in a bid <laughs> for uh, Toshiba NB550D. It's one of the old 10-inch um, netbooks, but it's the one with the dual-core uh, APU, the AMD C60, which the CPU side of things, it's bad because, you know, pre-Ryzen AMD CPUs, but the GPU mm -hmm. is awesome. And uh, yeah, ever since um, we gave uh, we gave out my old one uh, to someone who needed it. So ever since then, I've been uh, trying to get my mitts on one so I could do the ultimate upgrade of the uh, that particular netbook because I know <laughs> that there's a few that you can do. So yeah, <laughs> right on. Very nice, Pedro. <laughs> I I look forward to. You torturing that poor little device and like hey it's thing. yes all right <laughs> best of luck with that as always still playing around with some audio stuff so uh, there's your fair warning during the live show there might be a pop or click and hopefully i catch anything that uh makes mm -hmm. it all the way through to the end of the show and to your ears in podcast or video format but i'll try to stay on top of that speaking of audio stuff i got this a poogie. I got a, a poogie. I got a brand new old a poogie one by Apogee. So this is a thing uh, straight out of 2009. These are incredibly cheap right now. Why are they so incredibly cheap? I thought a poogie was overpriced Mac stuff. True. But these are Mac only. And I don't think they even work on Macs these days. So guess what they do work on? Linux. <laughs> to what extent? I don't know. I've just had enough time to plug it in. Okay, look. Also, also figured it out. So we are going to uh, be experimenting with this because this would be a fantastic. I paid 35 bucks for this. And like it or not, yeah. in there is an Apogee preamp. So you're looking at like 63, 65 dB again, super clean. A little warm for me. And it has mm -hmm. a built-in microphone. I'm curious as to whether or not. Oh my. That, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> it's for conferencing. <laughs> yeah, I, I am yeah. genuinely curious about that. Also, I've been shooping for a monitor because I, for like a year now, I'm like, I want to replace this show note monitor because it's old, man. It's got like CFL mm. backlights in it. And, um, but it's very difficult to find one that is like ultra wide, but not like YOLO curved gaming. You know, this is turned like mm. this in, in portrait mode. <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is um, just get like a 1440p ultra wide for the, there's another monitor over here that you can't see, which is like this old Acer that I have that I'm using for the DAW and that'll be enough. Then I can take this one and use it for show notes because, it, hey, why not? Exciting times. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bunch of fun stuff. Stay tuned. Um, oh, we finished. Um, the Apuji thing, I'll probably have that up in like for patrons, maybe by the end of the week. It depends. Time allows, whatever. 
Doom 3. Pedro, you got to join us. I did. Saturday for, uh, night. After Thank the you. show on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pedro, we were doing, playing around the after show. Me and Jordan, we've been going through Doom 3. OG Doom 3. And everyone's like, but BFG. <laughs> no, you need the mutton. No, 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 baby. We're doing it old school. Like Alan was irritating. there too. Exactly. Mr. Alert. <laughs> he showed up. And so episode three, that'll be up. I'll post that once I get done with um, the show this afternoon because YouTube finally finished. Pro- you sent YouTube a 4K video. It's like, man, I'll get back to you next week. It finally did. <laughs> it finally good. did. It finished doing that last night. So that that's been a very fun experience. We'll be back. Uh, we do live stream that. So um, tomorrow night. Jordan and I will be back with it. I think we absolutely learned that there's a reason that four people max. Mm. <laughs> it, it got a little hairy. It got a little hairy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exciting so news, doom, though. doom, 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 doom. It's the doom song. Doomy, doomy, doom, doom. <laughs> doom, 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 doom. Fedora 34 <laughs> is a uh, nice, hot, fresh beta. Yeah, this is so exciting. So yeah, the Fedora 34 beta has been released and it's got so many huge changes and package up updates. And it's been a lot of fun to to test it and you should go out and test it too. One of the one of its many features is a the Linux kernel 5.11 and this is huge. The much anticipated Pipewire sound daemon, which works out of the box when I, I booted the live USB with the uh, uh, default uh, default uh, Fedora mix with GNOME. And yes, it has GNOME 40, which has just been released officially today. And so, you know, you can test out its horizontal app grid scrolling and works space navigation and there's also a fedora 34 beta spin officially now for the i3 tiling window manager so you can go play with that and get your your tiling on with the with i3 <laughs> i'm going to say a couple <laughs> of good things about it i'm going to say it's extremely successful because pedro mateus you have installed it on a laptop and in the pre-show in the pre-show and it's like so <laughs> well, what did you think about the whale and a gnome thing to which pedro retorted I'm using whatever the default is. Yeah. <laughs> Which is that, this is a it good worked. sign. You're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, I tested uh the three games that I am actively playing right now, which are uh, Neverwinter Nights, uh Outward and Need for Speed World to test Proton and the native games and the um like wine outside of proton just the default repo version of wine to see if everything was working and yep everything works with the intel drivers uh if pipe wire is there mm-hmm. and it is i can see that it's installed <laughs> but it's invisible for my particular use case with this laptop which is just my computer when i go around doing things it's uh yeah, for that particular use case, it's completely invisible. And uh, the beta update, kudos once again to Fedora, the in-place DNF system upgrade works as intended. Very good. I was really happy to see that, man. And Pipewire. <laughs> Pipewire is going to be a fun thing to play around with. I know um, uh, one of the beautiful critters from Red Hat hit me on Twitter when I was like testing. He's like, you need to test that with Pipewire. Mm. <laughs> There will be a day when I um, play around with pipe wire in the studio, but I'm not going to voluntarily just, uh, yeah, that, that's too much testing in production, but I'm glad to see it's working very well for uh, desktop usage. Yeah. yeah. No, I was impressed because, and it, you know, working with the live USB out of the box too is also good because sometimes there's issues with the live and the install. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to live that pipe wire dream. But sticking with audio stuff, Sonobus 1.4.0 is out of ADA and gang of new mm-hmm. features, multi-channel support's been added, input mixer stuff. It's got a mm-hmm. chat support for playing MP3s. That's kind of neat. Uh, default user volumes, all this fun stuff. And it, unfortunately, Pedro updated his version of Sonobus <laughs> because I was looking forward to um, being able to nuke him from orbit at will. Because if you're using this version and you're connected to somebody who's using an older version, you can basically just spite crash their setup. But what is Sonobus? You've never heard of it. It's one of the things that we are testing. It is uh, low latency, high quality audio. 
now, of course, it's been made for, you know, musicians playing together. And of course, I looked at it and like, I can misappropriate that, which we have, at least in testing. And they put a nice GUI on it. Now, not really doing anything terribly new. This is something that you could, I know you might be saying, I could do that with Jack Trip and not Jack. You could, but you couldn't get Pedro mm-hmm. to use that. This. <laughs> <laughs> this i'm gonna say hey, I, I mean, tried man <laughs> Pedro, you can speak yeah i'm not i'm not even throwing you under the bus about that um i tried man i did i, I will say apparently to, you could hear me i just couldn't hear you in, in my defense in my defense i said let, let me test this with jordan before i do anything hey jordan he was like yeah what's up yeah work it yeah it's fine um okay but <laughs> Pedro, before messing with this, you were pretty much um, Jack avoiding. You're like, I don't really want to mess with mm. Jack or anything like that. That's fine. Understand it. I'm, uh, I want to get your opinion from like me saying, you install this now. This is what we're going to mm-hmm. be playing with. How mm. bad was it? Uh, it's actually not bad at all, because if you do pull the Git, it tells you how to build Phrasing. the instructions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to take that out of context, uh, but the, <laughs> uh, the build instructions are very simple and it has a little um, like pre-build script that you can run and uh, depending uh, on the distro, it will automatically pull the dependencies. One of them happens to be uh, Jack and the development uh, package for Jack. And yeah, once that was uh, installed, it's... Yeah, just do get uh, mm. pull to get the most recent version uh, forward slash build sh sudo uh, dot forward slash install sh and it works. It so yeah. <laughs> what about the actual user experience from you installing that? I'm like, okay, I need you to send me sixteen bit uncompressed audio. Oh, it's very nice. Mm. It's got buttons with labels. <laughs> I can just <laughs> find things. People it's like, like this oh, for like, some reason. Ah, there we go <laughs> now to go the opposite direction with this this also adds the ability to um call it via command line which nice yeah i was very happy so i can automate <laughs> getting things set up so it's easier to play with but fantastic work and an extra shout out to the developer set of us because i walked in when like hey this is going to be a crazy edge case but this doesn't load the VST3 plugin through a door when I'm using it with a X11 forwarding, which that's how I run this, but it's on a 10 gig link. So it's not like, you know, slow. It's super fast. He's like, Hey man, I'm that, that that's weird. I want to know why it does this. And he started digging into it. And so we, we took our party over to the Adore team. And Robin hmm. was like, uh, dad, I don't, don't know. And we figured out it's because it's the way the thread processes work inside of a door. And, basically came to the consensus that we can throw the juice framework under the bus for that, which it might not ever get fixed. That's an edge case, but just good work altogether. I like seeing that with projects collaborating and even on like stranger edge case issues, not immediately going, you're holding it wrong. Go away. And saying, okay. Hi, OBS development team. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get done with just one little bit, one little bit of audio stuff and that's audacity you've used it don't lie to yourself we know you have <laughs> there's a new version now 3.0 and basically this is mostly just a bug fix don't expect anything earth shattering but that's okay man you know what's previously 242 what they've done is they went and fixed a gang of bugs in this and i mean a gang it's a couple of hundred and I think the big thing here is that you're not going to notice is uh, they've changed the way that Audacity saves files. They went from a bunch of, mm-hmm. if you've ever looked at like your Audacity save, mm-hmm. it's a ton of like little files. They just went to using SQL and a big chunky setup. You shouldn't notice anything there. Label sounds, noise gate improvements. That's great. And that's uh, more better. But one thing you might be wondering, so they, they finally, we get some movement, some motion on that user interface from 1996 nope <laughs> not even a little bit hey, <laughs> how like would it you know way. it was audacity otherwise <laughs> <laughs> i gotta say you you learn it it's a thing i find myself working around audacity as opposed to because it genuinely it is one of those programs kind of like cinderella if you want to see what ui was in the mid to late 90s. 
orange and turquoise? <laughs> Bad in general. <laughs> this real watch. That website has looked the same since 2000 whatever it was created. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but um, how about a Beowulf cluster on demand? Does that sound kind yeah. of interesting? This is so really awesome. Based. <laughs> yeah. I, as opposed to uh, other mm-hmm. Beowulf clusters, which were based on magic. <laughs> <laughs> they also involve other hardware, but I guess technically this one does too. No, no, Pedro. You, this one runs solely on software. I have a pile of software on the floor that I'm going to connect you this can, to. You can actually do this to a VM, yes. <laughs> what I'm talking about is OutRun, not the video game as you pointed out. I know. He, yeah. read, go back I'm only slightly notes. disappointed Very that it wasn't about this. the game. Execute <laughs> a slightly. local command using the processing power of another Linux machine. Yes, this is basically what aims to be, hopefully in the future, a Beowulf on demand. 100%. This is a clever use of Fuse up and SSHFS. Huge fan of SSHFS because I'm lazy. And CH Roots do let you run programs on remote computers. Uh, now, I know what you're thinking. Plat9 does this out of the box, and no one's really saying that, but I did deal with it. Now, the <laughs> file system performance is going to remain your bottleneck. You know, most suitable workloads, you're looking at something like um, rendering, FFmpeg, stuff like that, ray tracing. You can get away with it. Doesn't require much to run. Pip, what do you need? Install Outrun Serum and some Python. That's about it. But there's a couple mm-hmm. of examples. Very early project, but th- this is just really neat. I-, I like seeing somebody walking in and, you know, this could be helpful in situations like, again, rendering video, blender usage, stuff like that. If you get a bunch of machines around the house. Now, even, even on a WAN, this is workable. You know, that thought went into that and having something like this local that you could do without having to do a, uh, hey, Amazon, how you doing? Here's a bunch of money. Spill some <laughs> things up for me real quick. <laughs> it can get it done, but it cost a few bucks. Uh, I thought this was pretty interesting. Pedro? It, it is. And the um, syntax to actually pull this off is very similar if you've ever used SSH for anything. It's outrun user at host. That That's it. Mm. And it just sets up the CH mm-hmm. root. You don't need on the uh, server or whatever other machine you happen to be running outrun on it's yeah no it does everything to gosh dang you python you you do a very good job (laughs) yeah this is definitely uh uh, one of the things that's really cool about this is this is what we've been doing honestly for years as on a render farm for for animation so it's nice that now all the programs on linux you can do this with (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it, we've been able to do this with other software, but this one's just easy peasy. Mm. And, you know, <laughs> it helps you compile even faster by using the power of a remote workstation or server. That's always a cool thing. <laughs> it's a fun thing. And it's nice to see it being mm-hmm. simplified to this. And I, mm-hmm. I, things like this, I don't mess around with because I look at it. Same reason. Like, what <laughs> what can I do with this? Mm, that, everything yeah. this is the thing that uh, a lot of people will be going oh this is basically mm-hmm. all that i need to have the one powerful desktop in the basement somewhere and just use laptops or tablets for everything there you go that's the idea <laughs> that's the plan <laughs> open razor is out with um 3.0 and there's a gang of new devices added yeah, so it has lots of new features and device support and lots of bug fix- fixes, very important. So uh, for those of you that don't know, Open Razor is an open source driver and daemon that lets you manage your RGB rainbow vomit keyboards, mice, and peripherals on Linux. <laughs> 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 and it now has support for the Razor Blade Stealth, late 2020, Razor Mouse Bungie. <laughs> <laughs> Razor Firefly mouse pad and the Razor Naga left handed edition, which is nice. Oh, and, hey, some love for the lefties. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's also cool is the devs added, had a persistent storage of effects in the daemon because previously front ends had to, no, no way of reliably, reliably getting the effect that a device had last set. 
So that's very important. And I actually have been using Open Razor for years. And when it was in beta, I used it with my Razor Black Widow Chroma keyboard, which I wanted to show, but it's already packed up because <laughs> I'm moving <laughs> stuff out of my room. <laughs> so um, I, I use that so I could get all the bling bling and effects to work on the keyboard that only had Windows software. And I remember being impressed on how well it worked, and I got the daemon to work on Flexbox with a little persistence. But I was very impressed with the project, and it's great to see how far it has come. It really works beautifully I with all really the like hardware. This and the, just <laughs> boom, that big list, and like that's that's pretty impressive, <laughs> especially you know. Now all of your Razer equipment, man, like your Razer keyboard, your mouse headset, mouse mat, George Foreman USB grill, you can make it all blink, Pedro. Yes. Yeah, you can. Uh, and simultaneously. And yeah, you can sync it. Uh, that's the big thing because this is the driver. So basically, if you have, like Nemo uh, was showing his talks there earlier, uh, the, uh, if you have a Razer keyboard and a Razer mouse and a Razer mouse mat and maybe even one of the um, few Razer compatible um, cases and monitors or the laptops, you can sync all of that with the one driver. Uh, but the driver is all very well and good, so I went to go and check what kind of, you know, other software for actually controlling everything um, you could use this with. I was hoping, hoping very much that OpenRGB would be one such software. Nope. There's a, bu <laughs> there's a lot of them, including just a few, um, like... A tray uh, icons that you can set up for gnome uh where you just click the tray icon and it gives you all the options there which is all very well mm -hmm. and good but um i mean you only have to use the software once to disable the rgb though yes <laughs> <laughs> unless you're completely uh add addled uh and you need the blinky stuff to no. keep you interested Pedro, it's uh, easy the... to pay, just wear a blindfold when you're using the computer <laughs> but then i can't see <laughs> But I'm some gloves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my hands are not RGB though. Uh, the yeah no, we don't in Linux. We don't really need ten different RGB control softwares like they have on Windows. In fact, it was that multitude of different softwares and the promise that ones would support everything and others would not <laughs> that led to that RGB software being the malware vector. So what you're yeah. saying is we need Pulse Audio for RGB. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah like pipeline how about even better uh, Leonard get on it <laughs> this just won't work Matt it'll seize a few times and cut off uh, no see the first few versions it'll be rough everyone will hate it'll it be but then people nothing. will begrudgingly just go alright okay <laughs> man so this next story is something everyone's been clamoring for they, they've been looking around like man if I only had a mobile interface mm -hmm. for XFCE and it was named after fish. I know, right? I know. That's what I... Our long <laughs> national be nightmare tuna fish. is over. <laughs> we finally have Tuda, a mobile UI for XFCE. I'm not kidding around. It's even made with 1.7% Mason, so you don't have to worry about Mason poisoning. That's kind of brilliant, man. <laughs> That's just the build script. That's it. <laughs> so... They're looking for submissions, and this is all about it. You know, this community project brings mobile interface to XFCs based on Posh, um, but it's lighter, more customizable, and it's not its own DE. It requires XFC to be installed for it to work naturally, and they are looking for contributions. I don't think it looks bad at all. This, this is Tuna, uh, the dream sequence. Like, <laughs> 1.0 when it gets here is what it's going to look like. To me, I don't know. I wanted to throw this out for everyone else because mobile mm -hmm. interfaces all look the same to me. I, I'm <laughs> immune to design. <laughs> They all look like Android 3.0, yes. The, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one to beat right now uh, on the mobile space, uh, according to uh, Anthony from the Linus Media Group, uh, he got his hands on one of the Pine phones and went through all of the mm -hmm. major um, <laughs> operating systems. And Ubuntu on mobile apparently is the one to beat in terms of performance. So if this uh, kicks Unity's butt, because that's where the Unity desktop environment lives now. It's on Ubuntu Mobile. Um, if this can beat that in terms of performance, th this could be a winner because Fosh looks very good. 
as far as you know the gnome um desktop goes it is very clearly mm-hmm. designed for big fat thumbs on very tiny screens well, you do have so, to think the really the only thing people are going to be able to play around with this readily is like their pine phones but how do you judge performance on a pine phone like, <laughs> um, playing a, a youtube video just opening a browser and playing a youtube video seeing how high a resolution you can take it until it starts <laughs> chugging yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like and, yeah, I think the like, Unity Unity did very well. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just exciting to have another competitor in this space. I mean, we just had the Jing OS operating system with the the uh, Jing Jing tablet we talked about last week, as well the as the long time <laughs> Jing Pad A one, <laughs> the Jing Pad A yep. one, as well as the long time and successful efforts of you know Pine sixty four and UB ports, and this is helping to inspire other people in making projects for the best touchscreen mobile Linux experience. We want it. We're just waiting for it. <laughs> it's all about the apps, so. <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, I I don't know. I'm getting. Man. I'm still excited about that lap not laptop the tablet from last week because yeah something like that. Hopefully it's not going gonna... to be as boutique as everything else. But Pine Phone that's good on roads. We got to get the ecosystem there, and things like this will only help. And that's kind of pretty yeah. Fun. Well, Jingo OS is going to be Im- implementing Android uh, app support. I think with uh, Android. Android. There's a and, few yeah, possible and uh, alternatives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Box is talk, very popular. They also need to go ahead and uh, release the source <laughs> for what they're working on for anybody who's going to touch it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Beautiful people. If you like what we do for getting a slice pie, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we finance everything. That's why we're not sitting here trying to sell you things like Bubba Kegs and maybe Apogee Ones, but we're able to take things like Apogee Ones. We're like, hey, let's go find out if this thing's out of Linux and we can save you some money, which we will be doing. Each and every one of you will be in our credits at the end of the show. We throw in some extra things. If you can support us, buck a week like that. Up into our not yet owned by Microsoft Discord, where you can hang out. <laughs> you get some custom RSS feeds. We got a special show that we do for patrons, a little behind the scenes, pre pre super shows, and a little secret stuff that we we'll work on each and every week. And we invite you to watch that live an hour before Linux Gamecast Weekly and previews for things that are being worked on in and around the studio. It is brilliant. So are you. Now, mm-hmm. we have some people to thank this week. Jill, you. Uh, yeah. So I was excited. Eldius, once again, he gifted me a game. It's Never win- Winter Nights, Enhanced Never Edition it. on what Steam, <laughs> which Pedro has been playing on Tuesdays. Currently <laughs> so four happy. episodes in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gotta give Aldius always a shout out. You wonder what this board yeah. is. This is people who've um, picked up things for those. Helped us out, man, because we are a small little dog and, and pony trust show. us, Aldius <laughs> is there. You can't yes. uh-huh. really see it, but He's there. All these is there. He's yeah, always second to last on the, on the list. <laughs> I do want to give a shout out because this, this was very entertaining. Uh, we do live stream on Twitch and um, Basil and uh, Salty uh, oh, yeah. gifted a <laughs> gang of subs. I think Basil was the first mm-hmm. person that dropped them. And then Salty saw that and he's like, nah. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, it's like here comes 10. Salty. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also, I mean, it's a fun thing that helps us out. Uh, you get access to our backlog and you can also hop into our not yet Microsoft owned Discord if you uh, spend some of uh, those Bezos bucks because you get a free Twitch thing with your Amazon Prime subscription, which I have. I remember to use that sometimes. Occasionally. <laughs> occasionally so, yes yes <laughs> that a is lot. there. Keep it even brilliant, everyone. And thanks for letting us do this. But look at that. Ooh, that oh, is a It's just the one pie. slice left. It is. Yeah. Sharing is caring, but that one's mine. Deal with it. Oh, <laughs> that's because my Steve oh. husband ate it all. He probably he's, was. That's, that's his favorite. The shame pie. <laughs> <laughs> so Raspberry Pi Imager Update 1.6. It's out. Man, that's not whatever you choose. OS, but, uh, oh, my God. What is this? Finally. Control shift X, baby. This, <laughs> yes. this right here is going to cut 11 steps out of your next setup. That's this is going to save you a lot of time. <laughs> this has been yeah. such an issue. I have scripts to do this. What are we talking about? Mm-hmm. SSH. You can do this. You can enable SSH on the image right there. You click the box. It's done. Wi-Fi, host name, passwords, locales. Mm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. all of that's there. <laughs> to which, thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, bye. Second question: uh, Why wasn't that there from the get go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Work in progress. Roll back to uh, last year when I was uh, doing the. It might have been earlier this year. I don't know. Time's weird this year, right? But the Pi Zero W, um, because I needed to get mm-hmm. into that because I was impatient. I didn't have a look like, a little micro USB adapter. I'm like, okay, how do I load an image with this with SSH enabled, with Wi-Fi credentials, so I can get into it? And I had to go through these like, weird backflips. But now, no more. Doop, doop, done. <laughs> Seriously, the amount of time this cuts out of if you have to deploy, like, even if it's just like 10 Raspberry Pis, this just lets you set everything up. Yeah. From the get go. Yeah. You just have <laughs> like to push in the Linux. SD cards <laughs> and boot the Pis. Ta da. Yeah. <laughs> Your move, Microsoft. I want the Windows 10 image <laughs> to do that too. Well, this is nice. It's nice. Like a. a uh, more, it's like a new, uh, fresh Linux install from one of the major manufacturers, <laughs> the Ubuntu <laughs> installer. So it's it's getting closer and closer to that, which is really cool. And I think actually the Control Shift X is brilliant. Um, having it as uh, the advanced options is a great way to hide these settings from the average user, but at the same time, let us power users have fun. So people who are new to using the Raspberry Pi, they don't have to worry about it. It's out of, out of, uh, I, uh, off their eyeballs. <laughs> so. That's very nice. It is kind of <laughs> Pedro, can I ask you a question? Sure. <laughs> have you ever dropped your mobile? Uh, I'm sure I have, but I don't remember any particular occasion. Imagine <laughs> if you could drop your mobile and pieces of it would go sliding across the floor and under things and under your heart, you know, just you, but, but you could collect them after moving furniture and fishing them out with brooms and stick mm-hmm. it back together and it would work. That's, that's the dream, actually. Uh, we've had the idea of modular uh, portable devices for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Ones that you could say, if you wanted more battery, you could get a bigger battery module or an extra battery module to put alongside the one you already had. If you wanted a bigger screen, you could replace the screen module with a bigger one. That idea has been floating around and it's failed every single time. But someone else mm-hmm. is attempting uh, their uh, play at it, Project Pocket. Uh, that's uh, P-O-C-K-I-T. Oh, you, it comes with a knife. It, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is a modular computer, not necessarily a phone, though it does come in that form factor that uh, does uh, lend itself to it. And you can pick several different modules. Uh, they, uh, they're they making some very, very bold claims uh, in their um, presentation here, but... What is most interesting to me is that the new version that's going to come out is uh, will come the full kit with the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module in it, which is um, (laughs) that. Yeah, that right there. No, uh, no, the I'm. (laughs) <laughs> My brain just had a bit of an issue here. A bit. Uh, that was the, not an audio issue. <laughs> no, it was definitely my brain. Uh, the um, compute module uh, four is for the next story. This one is for the older ones, the DDR uh, SO DIM uh, slotted ones. So if you have one of the old um, SO DIM like uh, connectors for the uh, compute module three, for example, you. With the new version of Project Pocket, you'll be able to use that to help drive it. It also already has a built-in, uh, what is it, an STM32 plus uh, an ESP32 dual processor. So you already have some processing power and it'll do the basic stuff. But with the compute module in there, that that becomes a whole different beast on its own. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> And I was impressed with how everything just kind of snaps together. They all the modules magnetically uh, snap to it, like the the keyboard and the Wi-Fi adapter. And this is just brilliant because you can make a Linux computer suited towards your needs and whatever project you need it for. It's th- this is what we've needed for years. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> the, uh, did, oh no, I think the dog ate the Wi-Fi module. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh that's a whole new meaning to the internet of sh- mm. 
things. Yes. <laughs> so I, I look forward to it. I mean, this honestly, look, I think it'd be very interesting for like education, stuff like that. Practicality. Mm, I, I, definitely. I, I was not joking at all. You drop something like that. You're going to be fishing that device out. <laughs> from around no, the house. that's the fingerprint reader. I needed to unlock the thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. but then again, you've kind of won my heart over with a knife option. All right, that's uh, yeah. You know, yeah, and I think think you're exactly right about education. Just just think, you know, it it kind of takes the Raspberry Pi to the next level where the, yeah. where the kids can just snap it together like they oh, do Legos. No, I think it's for like so. graduate students. Help them out oh. the, the hardware. <laughs> that Ma- too. <laughs> maybe file some of the sharper edges off of it. Don't want to poke their eyes out. No. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be rounded a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so maybe you want a different kind of pie in your life. And last week we talked about which was probably going to be an incredibly expensive tablet. And maybe mm-hmm. maybe even dreaming mm-hmm. about that's not an option. I guess it's never going to be my budget. <laughs> this possibly could be. That's this amazing. doesn't look terrible uh, because <laughs> for the price of a Pinebook Pro, the uh, brand newest from um, Pine64, you can get yourself a Cutie Pie tablet, which is this one is the one that uses the Compute Module 4. And Why do I need the a tablet, price, Pedro? I could have just had all that. <laughs> you could have, but uh, and a cat for Aww, kitty cat. the form factor that you get, <laughs> and you do get full size USB ports and everything that the uh, baseboard for the compute module four gives you access to. You have on a tablet plus the handle. The handle, I'll admit, looks a bit <laughs> like a handle, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. is it just me? Is when you see a handle on something, uh, a Linux device like this, you also expect a hand crank? <laughs> there, it's like there is the, that, just yeah. charge the battery <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is driving a um raspberry pi 4 effectively so you will need those uh 15 watts at least so yeah keep that in mind the it comes with what is it a 5000 milliamp uh, hour battery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the baseboard so that you can connect the um compute module to but you can buy the whole thing including the compute module with the uh, Cortex A72 uh, quad core for 200 bucks, effectively. Open source hardware too. Now, the only thing yeah. that really worries me, I mean, A72, that's going to be fine, 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, it's going to get stuff 8 inch LCD, it's not 10. 1280 by 800, this is better than 720, just. Yeah. Just. <laughs> I like the 1610. <laughs> rear facing yeah. camera and uh, dimensions i mean this is pretty small but it's got a nice little handle on it the only thing that genuinely worries me about this uh well i'm not gonna say worry it means i'm not really gonna mess around with it is with that battery you're looking at five hours of standby time not run time not mm-hmm. doing stuff time basically <laughs> an idle so th- this immediately yeah, puts it's a phone it, battery. <laughs> well, you, know, you think about this, man. I mean, that that immediately puts it in the same uh, portability as like a high end gaming laptop. Like, <laughs> you, you, but then again, high end yeah. gaming laptops have like <laughs> ninety watt hour batteries. <laughs> True, but what, what I'm saying is, you could successfully unplug this at your house, take it to your friend's house, and plug it back in. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> So it's that type very of portability. True. But it, I mean, again, <laughs> it's very affordable. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, the, it's not going to be toy. as powerful. Yeah, it won't <laughs> be as powerful as the Jingpad A1 tablet we just talked about and talked about last week. But this one is expected to ship in July of 2021. So <laughs> that's that's a good thing. It'll be nice. Uh, I think this started life as a Kickstarter. So um, mm-hmm. hey, people get their stuff. That's kind of brilliant. The Pine yeah. 4 it does have very good... Um, performance because especially for playing games at 640 by 480 <laughs> my pi 4 but, is very inter- energy efficient because i haven't cut it on in like a week because i'm still waiting for my certs to Aww. yeah uh, uh, playing a psp game so basically uh pushing this about as far as it'll go mm. the battery lasts for about four hours on the pi boy dmg and it is a mm. uh, 4200 milliamp I don't think anyone's going to lose sleep over 4,500 milliamp. All right. There you go. Okay, beautiful people. Uh, We got to get out of here. If you want to tell us how big your battery is, you can do that by heading over to linuxemcast.com, hit the contact button, leave a message. You can also do that on YouTube and all that, but we will at least guarantee you 
that will read it using our contact form. But until next yeah. week, I'm going to bring <laughs> up some music and we're going to roll them credits for those uh, beautiful people. Maybe. Get to thank all I our beautiful patrons. <laughs> Yay! Seriously, okay, thank you all love. very, very much who decided, you know what? This is a good idea. These people, they... This is an insane sound- business model, okay? <laughs> Let's just put yeah. it like that. Like, hey, if you like it... <laughs> it's Yeah, no, absolutely no complaints here. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Brought to you by Bubba Keg. Yeah, we have so many, so many patrons now. We can't even read all their names anymore. <laughs> On the end, do it every Saturday. Oh, there's a Jill and Steve. No, you uh. don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, like the three, the three of you will get through it all, but one person, no. <laughs> what is that a challenge? We have to keep talking over each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that or you slow it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. And that's the other thing is on Saturday it is it's slower going across the screen. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're done making excuses. <laughs> we gotta get out of here. Bye bye. Bye all. We love you.